Brian, it's Michael and Peter. How are you today? I'm doing all right. How are y'all doing? Good. How, how do you think your team comes into this series? And I'm sure that as the architect of this team, you could not have been too pleased with the way they played yesterday. No, yesterday's, you know, uncharacteristic game for us. And, uh, you know, we, we know we're better than that. But uh, uh, it's over with, and you turn the page, and, and uh, I'm sure nothing can jolt us like a Red Sox-Yankee uh, slugfest up in Fenway Park. So, um, you know, it, our guys will, you know, get ready to go compete and, and hopefully do what they do best, which is, you know, play great baseball. Do you believe... Brian, that Sonny Gray could be successful as a Yankee because with his stuff, it has not manifested itself in enough good outings. What are your thoughts? It's been a while now, so it makes you makes you wonder. Um, you know, if this, you know, I think Sonny Gray is, you know, a very good major league pitcher. We just haven't had the opportunity to really see that play out in an extended period of time uh, here. So, you know. Uh, I know that if, you know, he winds up somewhere else, um, you know, pitching, he's going to be pitching extremely well because the equipment's all there, the stuff's still there, the consistency that's not playing out right here is just hasn't happened yet. And uh, and it's, you know, the odds are probably it won't play out the way we hoped it would, um, you know, but uh, we've made a move. He's going to go to the pen, and Lance Lynn's going to take that start as we move forward. And, and um, you know, we've got a sprint now, uh, and uh, so, you know, we just got to realign and, and do what's the, what we think is best, and you know, uh, it's. I thought he'd turn the corner for us. That doesn't mean he won't participate and somehow helping us as we move forward here. And when did you uh, think he'd uh, turn the corner? Well, July. You know, look at his numbers. He was uh, three wins, one loss, eighteen in the third innings, fifteen hits, eight walks, twenty three Ks with a three point four four ERA in the American League. And yeah. uh, so, you know, and that that followed up with you know he had a horrific month of May, and uh, April and May were bad. And uh, then in June, uh, you know, he was 33 innings, 32 hits, uh, eight walks, and 29 Ks with a 4.6 ERA. And then, and then he, you know, combined that into May. I mean, I'm sorry, into July with the numbers I read you there. So his June and July work were. Uh, uh, you know, made the appearance and the results being that he was going in the right direction. You know, he's doing great quality work with uh, with Romine and with Larry Rothschild, our pitching coach, and we thought we were building momentum towards something. And then, uh, you know, we hit the wall yesterday, and, you know, um, you know, so he's been fighting. Uh, he obviously wants to do well, uh, and uh, but the other results have not been, you know, obviously Sonny Gray-like, um, you know, pre-Yankee. And, um, and so, you know, we just haven't been able to get out of him in this environment uh, what, you know, uh, what he's capable of. And that's, you know, something that, you know, uh, you know, I, I would be first and foremost responsible for because I, I'm the one that imported them in here. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, we just have to make an adjustment here so far. And so Aaron Boone and Larry Rothschild met with him in Boston and uh, broke the news that we're going to, you know, realign. And, you know, my understanding, although I wasn't, you know, in the room, was that he was professional. He'll do whatever we ask uh he recognizes obviously where things are he would prefer to take the start as he moves forward but but he will do what whatever's necessary but being a good teammate to try to help this team win and, and if it's in a different capacity you know uh he'll be ready when called upon and hopefully uh results will follow now obviously this is a results oriented business so if he goes to the bullpen in all likelihood brian he's going to be used as a guy if a starter gets knocked out early, and you might be better served having an arm from the minor leagues. Uh, my question to you is this, Brian. Does he have options, and would you think about sending him down to AAA? Uh, he's got over five years of service. That's not something so that's going to happen. Go, okay. No, you can't get him to you can't get him to, to AAA. Not that he would want to go either. Um, but, uh, you know, so hopefully, again, um, you know, you'll see, you know, uh, yeah, we'll see something different, you know, in a different capacity. Uh, and uh, but it's frustrating because obviously, you know, you know, we certainly expected more and better, and he did too. And and as I said, the, the more frustrating is the fact that we thought you know, he had turned the corner and uh, until yesterday, and and um, yeah, so it is what it is. And, and we just have to continue to make tough decisions. Uh, some of them become more obvious by the performance because it is a performance-oriented uh, situation. And, and so um, 
I guess uh, it's, it makes it that much more valuable that we uh, were able to acquire Lance Lynn, uh, and you know we'll continue to look at what we have at AAA uh, and lean on that when necessary. Now, obviously, you're you're aware. You hear the conversation that's going on every day on this show and elsewhere leading up to the deadline. Everyone was calling us every day about Degrom. Was there a point at which Jacob Degrom was a really serious possibility for the Yankees at any point? I mean, I can't speak to any individual player. I can tell you that uh, you know I did my job, which is uh, connect to all clubs, uh, and I can tell you that the, the direct uh, person I was dealing with from the Mets side was Omar Minaya, and I know he did his job on their, on behalf of their squad by connecting with all clubs. And um, so, for my job, I vetted all opportunities that that you know uh, that were available in the marketplace and tried to match up and and what we were able to do with uh, the imports of Zach Britton, Lance Lynn, and Jay Happ, uh, as well as uh, Voight. Um, and the international money was the results of that effort from our end. Uh, all other opportunities were vetted uh, every which way possible, and uh, and matches obviously couldn't be made you know, uh, in all locales, whether it's minor leaguers or major leaguers. Um, so I can just tell you, I'd, you know, rest assured from Yankee fans' perspective that we, we knocked on all doors, uh, checked all boxes, asked all questions, <laughs> made offers, uh, rejected offers uh, in various locales, and, and you know, I think everybody did the best of their abilities in, in each locale, uh, if you're buyers or sellers. And um, and the results, you know, are what you were able to accomplish, and everything else was vetted. So. All right. Now, now Brian, I've, I'd read uh, some interviews that you did right after the, uh, the deadline that, that teams did inquire about Sonny Gray. Are mm -hmm. you regretful now that you didn't make any moves, or were the offers not good enough? No, the offers weren't good enough. I mean, and in fairness, as I said, uh, first, I think we had, there's no question that Sonny Gray, I think teams look at and see, all right, we, we have someone that is struggling in this environment in New York, which has happened. And, uh, and you know, they've gone on elsewhere to pitch effectively or return to form. Um, we understand and see that uh, time and time again. So I had definitely teams that were in contention. And then teams that were not in contention, you know, because of his control year next year that asked about Sonny Gray because they know, you know, what his capabilities are and they see that the stuff is still the same. Um, but they approached it in the by-low situation where, you know, uh, it did not make any sense, especially when you saw what he was doing for us in July, you know, in those uh, more recent four starts and as well as uh, June. So in his June and July, it looked like he was building momentum, turning the corner. Did he have some bad starts uh, during those Two months of June and July, he did, but they were nothing like you know how it was in April and May. And, and as I said, it looked like he was going the right direction, especially in, in his four starts in July. So I was not presented with anything that would make me feel like I I missed an opportunity or I should have done something. Brian, um, I I was lucky enough to do the national broadcast for ESPN Radio, and I happened to be working with Aaron Boone when the A's faced the Tigers in the playoffs, and I watched Sonny Gray. Go pitch for pitch with Justin Verlander. I mean, he looked electric. So I'm wondering, has he failed himself? Is he Ed Whitson? Or has the Yankee staff failed him because they can't make him the pitcher that he was? Why has it gone wrong? Um, you know, that, that's obviously the, the head scratcher. Um, <clears throat> because, again, the equipment's there, the, the ability's there, the stuff's there. Um, and uh, just tapping into it on a consistent basis, you know, has been the challenge. And uh, and so, if I had a full answer for you, that it, it uh, you know, you know, I'd be able to provide it. But I definitely, I think this environment's not, you know, brought out the best in him for whatever reason. And you know, it could be as simple as you change locations and you get off on the wrong side of the mountain, and it's hard to stop. You know that that avalanche uh, from coming, and and that's all of our responsibilities. I'm responsible for importing them here, and and expecting obviously uh, to get the same results that uh, we saw in Oakland, and and um, so you know I would say that's on me. But uh, but at the end of the day, we we try to create an environment of support in every which way by providing you know. You know all aspects uh, for to allow our athletes to maximize their abilities, and and clearly when 
uh, we're not able to tap into the, that capability. It's it's our responsibility with that athlete. So I think it's all of our responsibilities to continue to find a way to to get consistently out of Sonny Gray, you know, uh, the best that he's got. And uh, and then while, while he's struggling, and he's not going to be the fir- he's not the first one that's struggling. We've had other guys, you know, year in and year out that aren't, you know, that that hit the low points in their career, and uh, and, and it's our job to try to limit them and, and limit that period of time as long as we can and, and salvage it and get it back on, on track. Uh, that's been the challenge. That's been the frustration. That's been what hasn't happened. We thought it was occurring uh, and then yesterday occurred. So, um, you know, you just got to, at some point you make a call and right now the call is uh, is to try another uh, way and, and see where that takes us. But that doesn't preclude uh, Sonny from entering back into the mix in this stuff because to go to your question about the starting side, as people were trying to, to buy low on it, you know, I know on a few occasions, like, listen, I know you're looking for a starter, but I, so am I, and I need the starting, you know, we'd lost Louis Saga and Herman, you know, to injuries, uh, certainly wouldn't want to, you know, run into another injury along the way, so as I had dialogues with others, as they were knocking on our door on certain things, um, I remember telling one general manager, I need starting pitching as much as I can get, so I'm not necessarily looking to subtract from it, and uh, you know, but in the meantime, that first start after the All Star, I mean, after the trade deadline, just didn't really go obviously the way anybody would have expected. So I'm curious, Brian. I mean, you made two deals for starters in Jay Happ, who's not going to be able to start Saturday because of hand, foot, and mouth disease, and then Lance Lynn. And then I look at Justice Sheffield down in the minors, who you acquired in the the Miller deal. And in nine, in his last nine starts, a 1.89 ERA, 51 strikeouts in 42 and two-thirds inning, 39 hits, 18 walks. Why is he not a consideration? What are you guys not seeing that you want to see in him? It uh, doesn't mean we're not seeing something. Um, you know, but obviously if you're asking why, why did I import Jay Happ instead of Justice Sheffield, that's because obviously, uh, you know, we think, Hap is more equipped right now to, to assist us in the pennant race right. as compared to Justice. Um, but yeah. you still like Justice? Of course. I mean, uh, Chef was asked for a ton in in every deal, and we said no. And uh, it's because we see what what the future, you know, uh, can bring potentially. And and so, uh, no, we love Chef Field. We don't like him. We love him. So uh, we, we think he's doing everything he needs to do while he's there. And uh, his time will come, you know, uh, in the future. Uh, when that's going to be, I don't know. Uh, you know, Sessa, obviously, I have ahead of him right now in terms of providing uh, opportunity. And, and Chance Adams has pitched much better of late as well. So I'd say that if you're looking for us to dig down into an alternative at AAA, when and if we need another start that has to come from our system, it's probably going to be a decision, you know, between those two if we dip into the system. Um, but right now, Sessa is going to wind up taking Saturday start if he doesn't doesn't get you and replace a Haps DL if he doesn't get used out of the bullpen Thursday or Friday in Fenway and and if he doesn't he'll start and if he does then we'll uh, we'll be looking at something from outside or or something from the system all right final thing before we let you go and we appreciate your time players always say they can't look uh, the broad scope of a series and say we have to do this in four games but as the vice president and GM of the team these four games in Boston, what's the minimum that you want your team to do? Uh, I mean, I want us to win every game, no question about that. But if we don't, it's not our season not, doesn't end, uh, you know, um, regardless of what happens between the next four days. So when we leave there Sunday, whatever happens, both good or bad, we're going to continue to fight for that division going forward because there's still enough time. Uh, have we dug ourselves a hole? Yeah. Have we played our best baseball late? No. Um, do we have time to change all of that? Yes. And that's all that matters, and that's all our focus is. So, um that's that's how we're approaching it.